Welcome everybody to my Majora's Mask review. My full in-depth review of Majora's Mask specifically on the Nintendo 3DS. Now, this is a game that I was anticipating for myself the most, that I was super excited to see how this game could change me, you know what I mean? And how I can learn from it. Because there's a lot of elements in this game that make this game a masterpiece, which I believe that Majora's Mask, without a doubt, is the best Zelda game and probably one of my favorite games of all time and I'll explain why. Usually around the years, usually Zelda has been always about, you know, uh, uh, getting keys, doing, uh, fighting bosses, fighting enemies, doing dungeons, saving the princess, you know, Zelda, obviously. It's always been about that. And I've always been used to seeing Zelda games like that, especially Breath of the Wild, or A Link's Between World, and uh, obviously the game before Majora's Mask, Ocarina of Time. Now, this game is so much unique compared to every single Zelda game, because this does not take place in, in Hyrule. It takes place in a different reality, which I think is a different reality. I think this game takes place in Termina, not Hyrule, Termina. Something separate that has never been seen before in Zelda. And what makes this game very unique is the atmosphere it brings off. This creepy, dark, very unsettling and very creepy feeling that it gives you when you see all the quirky characters and the dark themes that you see. There's many things that make this game outstandingly well when it comes to the atmosphere. Every time I see the moon, for example, which is a main part of the game, when the moon is involved, everybody in the town starts to freak out. Some people don't, but some do. When there is a person very afraid of the moon, he, he will be afraid on the last day. Which is, it definitely creeps me out, especially for a game like this. This is such an amazing game. The characters in Majora's Mask are one of the most strongest elements that make this game super impactful and makes the player very involved into this game. The characters are one of the most strongest parts of this game because it makes you get invested into their story and makes you want to explore more. For example, once you go to the Goron area, um, you see that the, usually the Goron's supposed to live in a hot area, but it's all flooded with snow thanks to the threat that's going on. And it's just insane to see these poor Gorons in despair and just freezing to death thanks to their, their noble warrior, Darmani. Darmani was a strong Goron that tried to fight for his people, but he died at the end trying to save his people. And you clean that mantle as taking the mask and doing it yourself, which is is super strong and people people believe that your Darmani's still alive even though he isn't, which makes the game very depressing and very sad. There's many parts of this game that make this a very sad experience. This game isn't about a happy ending. There's no saving princess because usually this game is not about saving anybody. It's bringing them happiness at their last moments. In the cafe and Anju side quest, probably one of the best side quests in all of Zelda. In that side quest, it's very sad to see because cafe gets turned into a kid and he wants to marry his wife, but he doesn't want to because he doesn't have the sun mask. So you gotta retrieve it some, from some thief, you know? That, that has the mask, once you get it, you, he reunites with his wife, but he feels embarrassed because he's a kid, but she'll still take him even though he's a kid, which is very, very powerful to see. Of the final day, it's very sad to see that Anju and Cafe will die at the very last moments of the world ending with their love, and they'll still be happy together while they die. It's super sad and depressing, and it's, it, it makes it makes us feel that we've done something. And another thing, the masks in the game aren't just a collectible. It is a collectible thing that you have in the game, but it is, a, it is also a very most powerful thing that happens. For example, the couple's mask, it is a reminder of their happiness, their love that you gave them in a different reality, but they can't live anymore because of what the damage that was caused by Majora. It's super sad, but in this game, you can't save everybody. You can only try it until they all die on the final day. It's always not about saving everybody because you can't save everybody. Another powerful thing in this game that makes it very, very crucial to the story 
is time itself. Time is a very, very most crucial thing in the game that you have to pay attention in. Time is very, very valuable and you must take each step. You cannot take any breaks. Like for example, when you're in a dungeon, you can't take your time just like old Zelda games. You have to do it as fast as possible before the time runs out and once the final day comes and everybody dies. It makes us want to do everything at once. It makes us, it makes the player want to invest and try to like, okay, I gotta get this done. I gotta, I gotta do things. I gotta, I gotta collect rupees. I gotta do this side quest. I gotta do this. It makes the player feel that they're, they're like, they're being rushed and they have to do this before the world ends. And honestly, it's, it's probably one of the best things and probably a cool difficulty option that. I like the most. Another very powerful thing is the gameplay and music. The gameplay and the music are very, very amazing and well, well done. The Song of Healing is a very, very emotional song that is probably one of the best songs in Zelda of all time. The Song of Healing is a is a dark, depressing, sad, and lonely song that play while someone is at their 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 last life and they're about to die. For example, when you save the dad that was turned into a, a mummy, I, I believe, you, you do the song of healing and it heals him back to his normal state, which is it's just crazy. It's very, it's, it's a very powerful song that I really, really enjoy and it, it, it just, it makes this, it makes it so amazing. It's so good and well done and a, a lot of the music is very, very good. Obviously, we've got happy music in this game, you know, like cool music. There's a lot of amazing music in this game, but it would take me like an hour to be here if I talked about the music and the gameplay, so. And the gameplay, it is it is very different from any Zelda game. You have basically three transformations. One, you can turn into a Deku. Two, you can turn into a Goron. And three, you can turn into a Zora. All three of them have different abilities and different things that you can solve in different puzzles. Obviously, you can fly as a Deku, you can shoot bubbles. As a Goron, you can, you're very tough and you can't really swim in water, but you can roll. Azora can swim, obviously, underwater, super fast like a dolphin. And now the bosses and the difficulty. The bosses in the game were also, even though there, there's only five bosses in the game, it still feels very, very cool to fight them. One of my favorites is Idolwa, one of the first bosses you fight in the game. Such a unique, and very unsettling boss that you fight in the beginning of the game. It's super creepy and it's 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 just crazy to see that this this type of stuff happens in the game. It's, I love how menacing these bosses are, especially the creepy masks that you have to obtain. Super well done. The difficulty does feel hard at some sometimes, especially in dungeons or bosses or whatever. And I really love the difficulty in this game is super, it gives me a challenge, you know what I mean? Now, the last part I will talk about is the story. The story in the game evolves in the beginning of the game. It shows that Link is trying to find an old friend, assuming Navi from Ocarina of Time. He gets stumbled upon the Skull Kid, aka Majora. And he has these two fairies and uh, he knocks them off and steals his horse. And once he follows the Skull Kid, he turns him into a Deku and runs off with his horse. And you meet the Happy Mask Salesman and he asks you, have you met with a terrible fate? He asks you if he can, if you can retrieve the Majora's Mask back and you get the Ocarina and you can turn back to normal once you get the mask. You get to the final day and boom, Skull Kid is waiting for you at the top. Once you shoot him with the bubble, he drops your Ocarina, you take it, but you weren't able to claim the Majora's Mask. But you did claim the Ocarina so you were able to turn back into a kid once you mess, once you met uh, Skull Kid. And then, one of the fairies informed that there's four areas you have to go to in the game in order to defeat Majora's Mask. Once you go to the four areas, obviously there's the Deku Palace where you gotta save the princess. Uh, it seems kind of simple, but once the story goes on, it gets super, super dark. It starts off as a kind of fun adventure with just saving a princess, something very simple, but I, I really do enjoy that. Afterwards, you uh, you go to the Goron area and you met Darmani, which is super sad that he died for his people. Once you do that, you go defeat the boss and claim the mask. You go to the Zora's palace or whatever it's called. You get the eggs, you storm the, the uh, you get the eggs by going to the Gerudo palace. And once you do that, you go to the Zora place, I believe, I, I, know, I don't know the name. 
you meet all the you know the the band members that you're part of and you get to sing the song to uh, Lulu which is I think the head singer of the band and you have to uh, sing the song obviously to her once that happens you awaken the turtle go to the dungeon and defeat the boss and everything usually goes back to normal my favorite area is Akana the kingdom or whatever it is you go through the area and you obviously stumble upon the mummy the dad who was turned into a mummy and you save him you know go through a bunch of things it's kind of it, i would be here for a long time if i talked about more but once you go to the kana castle you find the 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 kana king and once all that's over you go to the stone tower and you you know complete the dungeon and boom you fight the last boss and boom you have all four masks and now it was time to defeat majora I, while I was doing this, I was collecting a bunch of masks, you know, trying to, trying to, you know, be a completionist like I am, getting the bunny hood, getting a lot of things in the straight fairy so I can, you know, give it to the fairies. Once I have all that done, I go straight to the final day and defeat Majora's Mask by summoning the Guardians while they try to stop the moon. The whole time, it was not Skull Kid controlling it. It was Majora himself. He was using Skull Kid as a puppet, and once you go inside the moon, it's this very calming, relaxing moment in the game where you see four children running around with the masks that you defeated from the bosses, and one small child in the corner sitting at the tree wearing a Majora's mask. Once you play with those kids, you exchange masks with them, and they ask you very strange questions like, What's, what's under your mask even though you're not wearing a mask? Or what is happiness? Have you brought happiness? It's very unsettling and I don't, I don't know the meaning of it, so... Once you do that, the last child left is Majora. Once you collect all the masks in the game, he gives you the Fierce Deities mask. He says that it's just as powerful as the Majora's mask. He says, I want to play good guy versus bad guy. I'm the bad guy, he's the good guy thinking that fear, the Fierce Deity is just as bad as the Majora's Mask. Once you obtain the mask, you go destroy Majora himself with his different art incarnations and defeat him once and for all and get the evil out of the mask. At the ending of the game, it was known that Skull Kid had, had, were friends with the Guardians, but now he, has, he is friends with Link. A little callback they did was him saying, uh, you smell like the fairy boy from the forest, basically a reference from Ocarina of Time, which is a cool moment. The happy mask salesman has the mask and walks away and everything goes back to normal. But not really, because at the end credits we get to see the butler, the Deku butler, mourning for a Deku scrub, a dead one. And I'm assuming that's the one that we have the mask of, which is super sad. Painting a picture that everything we did still didn't save everybody, which is super sad to me. But there, that's the end of the game. Link goes off his journey to find Nabi again. And what an adventure that was. What a great story and game. Overall, guys, Majora's Mask is an absolute masterpiece that anybody, any video game fan or Zelda fan should play. I really recommend this game, and I give it a 10 out of 10. A very perfect game. I really love this game super much, and it's probably one of my top five games of all time. Hope you guys enjoyed my, my in-depth review of Majora's Mask 3D. Obviously, I didn't play the N64 version. Hopefully in the future, I can play it, but with that out of the way, Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This this video took a while to, for me to edit. Um, hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure to comment down below if you agree with me because this is a huge game and I really love the things that were done into this game. So yeah, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see y'all in the next video.